Boston accent is hard for me to hang on to. I'd have to be living in it for a week for it to really take. I can do a Boston accent, but anytime I'm doing an East Coast accent, it goes right back to my New York accent. Slips. Cool. Nobody asked. The Bollywood Bull uh, uh, With the Bollywood Bull Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Directions with Corbin. Your mom asked. Did she? And I gave. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to Patreon, follow us, click on subscribe, even the like button. Today we got a best ever food review show. Love it. Love it. That's why we watch it. Love it. Love it. That's why we watch it. Love it. Love it. That's why we watch it. This is a holy Indian street food, apparently. Wow. Uh, but not, not holy, like H O L I. It's H O L Y. Like uh, spiritual, I guess. Bizarre to epic. Bizarre to epic in, say this name. Varanas. Varanasi. Oh, Varanasi. Ah, it's Varanasi. What is that? That's the name of the place. Ah, like the city. Yes. Ah, so, yes. <laughs> bizarre Where to is that? epic in. What part of in, India? Uh, Uttar Pradesh. Ah, is that. That's mid, right? That's like. Mid up. North. Yeah. Oh, it's north. Mid up. Okay. UP. No, you pee. But I'm interested in the yeah, H O L Y. It's basically like the Vatican City of India. Oh, uh, hence <laughs> holy Indian holy street food. Yes. Got it. I've been to the Vatican. Have you? You've been to the Vatican? I went to Rome. Of course, I went to the fucking Vatican. Just because you were in Rome doesn't mean you went to the Vatican. Yeah, it's a different city. Yeah. It's the smallest city in the world. Yep. Uh, How was that? It was I had a lot of cool stuff in the museum. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I didn't meet the Pope. He was busy. Was, was Rome the only place you saw in Italy? Yeah, because we were only there for four days. Got it. And so we didn't have time to yeah. branch out, unfortunately. That's because I really want to go to that Italy. That whole trip, we went to Ireland, and I right. went all over Ireland. I forgot and, that Italy was part of that trip for you. Yeah, that, France, which, yeah. which was Paris. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we went down to Italy. Yeah. I, I could go back to Italy. Such good food. Greco del Toro but is I, where I want to go. I'd want to go like a full-on... I'm uh, I'm off the coast. Yeah. Tour. Yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. I want to go Naples because that's right next to Greco del Toro, where my family's from, and then Napoli. just take a jump from there because it's kind of in between the very bottom of the boot and Rome is mm -hmm. where Naples and Greco del Toro well, the is going to go to Rome. Is right here. That's SRK. Here we go. Hey besties, I'm traveling right now in Vietnam, and I just wanted to take a quick moment to say hey, thank bestie. you. Hey besties, what are you doing in Vietnam? Out. You're supposed to be in India. Lately. Maybe you're having trouble sleeping, having difficulty with the relationship, or I am, but it's I have in twins. In my 20s, I hit a rough patch dealing with similar issues of my own. I knew I needed therapy, and I took the extra step to get it. This is why I like partnering Good. with Brands, and the sponsor for today's video, BetterHelp. Better nice. Help is a platform that connects you with licensed professional therapists who are trained to nice. listen and help you. You can talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. So how do you get started? Just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and you'll get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. You can then schedule secure video and phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages. Everything you share with your therapist is completely confidential. Trust me, speaking to a therapist is a great way to organize your thoughts, your feelings, and to move forward in life. BetterHelp is also committed to finding you great therapeutic matches so it's easy to change your therapist if needed. Join the two million plus people who take in charge of their mental health. Did you know about that? The plus people. Okay, sorry. Now, on to the show. In that was great. Video, you're going to witness India's most unique street food in this country's holiest city. Even though there's so many people gathered, there is a certain tranquility to this place. Like this bread or bhati stuffed with chickpeas, then cooked in flaming cow dung. Cow manure, when it dries out, it is an excellent combustible material. Well, let's back up a second. Oh, that's an old boat. <laughs> no kidding. The city of Varanasi goes back over 5,000 years before history. Just like LA. Tradition. Okay, we are right now in the streets of Varanasi. Going past me right at this moment is a human body. This is a holy city filled with spirituality, ritual, and old souls transitioning to their final resting place. Is that where Vicky's film was made? As for my own it's a lot of films. I've been filmed here. Yeah. Yeah. In the sacred Ganges River. But first, I gotta find something to eat. 
Good morning and welcome to Varna. A lot of films right that are filmed there. The the very steps, old. Yeah. Holy site, yeah. One, it is one of the oldest cities in the world, and two, it's one of the holiest places in India, with thousands of temples and, of course, people flocking here to the river itself. Varanasi, also known as Benares or Kashi in ancient times, is the spiritual capital of India. All along the river, and as you're walking here, there's just so many unique sites to see. People with different colors, patterns of tikka on their forehead, people with ceremonial clothing, people who are coming here to hopefully get healed. It is something like I've never seen before. It's very exciting. Those who have journeyed to the sacred place perform rituals, descending to the river's edge by way of the Ghat, an ancient stone stairway. Even though there's so many people gathered, there is a certain tranquility to this place. Here, they soak, plunge, or play in an effort to purify themselves. For most Hindu families, a vial of this water is kept in every house. Oh. So let's talk about food. In India, Hindu is the majority religion. And for some people, that means no meat. Basically, since this is a holy city, we're not going to find any meat today. It's all going to be vegetarian foods across the board. In just a moment, we're going to pull up on shore, head into the city, and see what we can find. Honey, 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 honey. As you get off the boat, people are here. Either they are putting clothes back on or stripping down to get in the water. But there's so many different ways to worship, to pray, and to give gratitude while you're here. Beyond that, you can buy candles, you can buy incense, it's just like it's an unlimited number of things that you can see and discover while you're here. Today, we're starting our food tour with one of the city's favorite traditional breakfast options in a restaurant that goes back well over 100 years. We have come to our first food. This is called Kachori Sabsi. Kachori ah. is the bread you see right here boiling, frying in this hot oil, and then the sabzi. Sabzi oh. just means a vegetable dish. Here at the Rambandar, they have two, and we're taking on both. For four generations, people have been here making this dish. I mean, can you imagine before the airplane, before the car, before Facebook? I mean, is there anything before Facebook? Almost nothing. This place was here. <laughs> this morning's eating utensil, kachori. It starts with a dough made of lentil paste and flour. Love kachori. And deep fried. scoop up two types of sabzi. Alu sabzi with a potato base spiced with fried cumin. Also potato, bay leaves, turmeric, and other secret masalas. Then chole sabzi is made of seasoned black chickpeas. They also have green chutney and they have a sweet tamarind sauce here too. Upon ordering, both sabzi are added to the bowl. Then the two sauces. Oh. With kachori bread, and it's ready to eat. I've got some of the potato sabzi. That some looks of the green beautiful. Sabzi. That looks scrumptious. Right soon, but let's go for this. That's breakfast right there. Savory. Oh, yeah, baby. My taste buds are alive. That is spicy. It's sour. There's just tons of different seasonings going on there. For such a meatless dish, it is so full of flavor and body, it doesn't feel like anything is missing. I'm gonna put this on my kani, and I'm gonna grab some of this bread now. <laughs> the bread is brown, on my dry, kani. delicious. Even by itself, it's a treasure. I'm gonna scoop up whatever will stick to the bread. Little potato, some chickpeas, getting in on the party, all of it mixed together. Let's go for it. Crispy golden bread. Actually, I got some cameron in there too. So we've got spicy, sweet, savory, sour, like every flavor pulling in different directions. There's just so much happening in here. This is less than a dollar. You can get about three of these for one dollar, and that's one heck of a breakfast. The last thing I want to point out here, please. You can't get a McMuffin for a dollar. <laughs> In some kind of a machine. Would you rather have that or a McMuffin? <laughs> and then look, at the end of the day, perfectly yeah. biodegradable. Leaf plates. Well, it's more of a salad now. Okay, we are right now in the streets of Varanasi. Going past me right at this moment is a human body. In the spiritual city of Varanasi, perhaps no endeavor carries more weight than that of the proper and sacred passage to the afterlife. Evidence of this is seen routinely in the city's narrow streets. As I told you, this place is full of mysticism, it's full of religion, faith, worship. A lot of people come here for the last days of their lives, and that is something we just witnessed. Devout Hindus believe that if a deceased one's ashes are laid here in the holiest of the wow, seven sacred that's cities, a lot their soul will be transported to wood. heaven and escape the cycle of rebirth. This is pretty heavy stuff when all you're trying to do is grab a quick dessert. Let's talk about Lassi. Lassi is a uh. drink, a snack, a dessert, and it's loved all over India. Here in Varanasi, they do it a little differently. And at this shop, they can prepare it 100 different ways. First, curd and 
sugar are added to a steel mixing vessel and hand churned with a bit of ice until it becomes thick and yogurt-like. This place is over 100 years old. That is what's so interesting about Varanasi. As you walk here, you feel the history. When the lassi base is ready, he portions it into clay cups. You could just drink it like this, but I'm looking I for would. more. He adds almonds, Come cashews, on. pistachios, and orange saffron water, transforming its colors. Now, more lassi curd cream, and another complete layering of toppings all piled high before serving. Ah, oh, that looks incredible. Oh, 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 it's so sweet and delicious. Crunchy, delicious nuts give it a nice texture. There's something in there, a little tart and a little, just slightly sour. You can kind of half eat it. And I bet it's better with it. Big Beast Tasty Nuts. This is like stomach therapy. That breakfast we had, it was heavy and it was heartburn inducing. But this is what's gonna bring you back to life. This is kind of the uh, deluxe version. It's got a little bit of everything. But here you can order 120 different types of lassie. Are they super fast? No, not really. But <laughs> if you've got time, they will bring you a lassie of your choosing. And it's gonna be delicious. The other thing that makes this place kind of cute and unique is inside there's passport photos of a lot of people. My favorite part about the passport photos is it's a lot of pictures of people looking stern, a little scared. That is different from when people actually try this. For me, this is awesome. It's a great snack. It's a dessert. It's whatever you want it to be in your time of need. Our next food is not a meal. It's not a snack. It's basically an ancient breath mint using a strange, unexpected combination Pond? of ingredients. Hey, how you doing? Oh, right. I forgot. And we cannot shake hands, actually, because here he's making pan. His hands are actually stained from all the different ingredients and materials he's using to make this dish. This is pan. It was once thought of as a symbol of Indian royalty, and this food goes back more than 2,000 years. This third-generation shop huh? is non-stop, kicking out different varieties of I've not had a good pan yet. I'm going with the deluxe version. You can try following along and making your own at home. Let's give it a try. Today, we're going to get silver on made out of silver. Sunny in this moment has no idea what this is. Sunny, who does voiceover, knows everything. Let's cut to voiceover. First, the beetle leaf. This is always the base. Add kata, then chana, an infusion of saffron and slaked lime to help binding of the leaf. He's put on a nuts a mixture. Oh, I love nuts, especially these nuts. How's your palm looking at home? Good? Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Next, rose petals that have been cooked in sugar. You all know already, rose is not my favorite ingredient ever, but that is a lot of rose huh. petals. Then fruity green candy, some green chutney, more candy flavors, and finally, this rose is like my least favorite. Dust. I yeah, hate a rose. slice of metal that indicates royalty and second place finishes. Oh, this is the silver. <laughs> Guys, come on. This isn't any old pun. This is the silver pun. I know what you're thinking. Something usually has to get the bronze pun. And maybe I can't get the gold no, one, no. but I'm going to keep saving in one day. Last Garnish it with cherry and coconut shavings. And this is the most packed, confusing after dinner mint I've ever seen. This is a very unique food. I think a lot of people eat it here after dinner or for like a fun snack or to freshen their breath. It's uh, great after a cigarette if you're trying to hide your smoking habit from your wife or girlfriend. I'll tell you that. Oh, that guy's talked to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it right here. It's a one biter. Let's go for it. What kind did you like? The hand, the one that was made fresh for us at a Bengali festival. The guy was making it the right there for the us. It, it was so good. It didn't taste like perfume. No, it was actually, it was really, really good. It's such a big, overpowering bite. I don't know how people handle that. Can I tell you something? Couldn't even taste the silver. That is a wild experience no. here on the streets of Varanasi. Very nice. It's just to do it. There's no flavor. Not even texture. There's nothing. Do you like pan and Johnny? Right here. You like pan? Chuka. Yes? Batichuka. Nailed it. Our next tree food is cooked in flaming cow dog. Like Ezekiel 49 bread. It looks. Let's back up. Is it? Oh, I was like, no, what? if it's supposed to be cooked the right way, I'll explain. Made from chickpea Do you have it? Raw mustard oil, harum seeds, red peppercorn, and red chili pickle. Shape that into a ball. As the dough balls pile up, they light up a pile of dry cow dung. Use of dry cow dung as a fuel for fire goes back thousands of years. They're That's dry, very flammable. flammable. Turns out, if you want, you can cook on those dung patties too. As you know, in India, cows are revered, so technically, this is holy. <laughs> I'll probably have to take that out of the video. <laughs>
do it, it's remarkable for many reasons. You put it in the soil and it helps the vegetables and plants to grow big and great. strong, but when it dries out, it is an excellent That looks delicious. Material. Now, I know what you're thinking, but it's cow dung, isn't that bad or what, unhygienic? The fact is, it's a million degrees. The yeah. Air, all the cow dung is made out of organic matter anyways. It right. Grass and watermelons, grains. So it's basically like we're burning plants anyways. They just happen to have passed through a cow. When the bread is ready, dust off the excess ash and they're ready for the next step. That's interesting. To serve, our vendor grabs a bowl and adds choka or potato curry. It's a mix of veggies, spices, Yummy. roasted eggplant, tomato, and boiled potatoes. Add a bit of green chutney on top and then the bread, dipped in ghee before serving. Oh, wow. Wow. All right, guys, I have my next food right here. It looks tempting, hot, and spicy. Oh, that looks Let's amazing. You, it is 106 degrees today. It's the perfect <laughs> weather for spicy food. Let's try it out. It's so powerful and so intense. It's heavy and greasy and spicy. There's something super sour in there. What's interesting is, you know, if I was in Vietnam, they would have some herbs to balance out the meal. Here, our balance is just straight onion. It's like, oh, is that too spicy? Just eat raw onion then. <laughs> <laughs> so inside, you can see the filling. It is that roasted chickpea flour. It's nutty. It has a very thick texture. The chutney is bringing something hot, something sour. In many countries you go to, your average meal is going to be either designated, spicy, savory, sweet. But in India, they're not afraid to do all three. This is food that wakes you up at night as you remember the flavor in your dreams. And you're, you're, you're in a seasonal masala sweat. <laughs> <laughs> delicious, but man, that is a powerful food with a kick on these streets. I like those uh, leaf balls, farm. man. I love them. The Hindu religion itself has several sub-branches, though some tenets of the faith seem constant. Devout Hindus are vegetarian, though dairy consumption is still allowed and enjoyed widely. That's interesting. For those who follow the Hindu faith, the cow is to be revered, and it's seen as a mother figure. The cow provides milk and gives life. This is also why it's not unusual to see cows in the street, even in major metropolitan cities. Right now we are deep in the alleyways of Varanasi. This is a local Indian confectionery where they're making about a dozen different desserts that people can buy on the street. India is famous for its desserts, and their massive dessert-making factories are something to behold. This is called Langletta. On the outside, it actually looks like a delicious wheat flour dumpling, but it's a kind of a dessert dumpling. Here, in another small corner of Varanasi, the team from Jai Kopal, Mishtan Bandar, confectionery have been producing this unique dessert for over three decades. The filling is prepared right on the spot, starting with koya, a type of cooked reduced milk. Next, add sugar and ground cloves. That's what I love about India is whether it's meal food or dessert food, they're always crossing boundaries and borders and kind of taking it to places I certainly wouldn't expect. When the filling is thoroughly mixed, it's stuffed inside rolled flour sheets and contorted into their signature shape. Interesting. Ah. Now, the healthy part. Deep fry for 10 to 15 minutes until they turn a heavenly, crispy, golden brown. In a separate pot filled with sugar syrup, milk is added to remove impurities of previously cooked food particles. After adding a touch of rose essence, it's ready. Submerged fried dessert, saturating it completely. Dang! Wow! wow. Right here, I am. Jeez, that looks like alleyway. it's going to be not dripping. So a cow just walked through here, and I'm hoping that it comes back to say hello. I'm not sure if this is part of the cow's natural diet, but it could be. So this is still hot and just dripping with yeah, decadence. Yeah, that's I'm what it looked like. Bite, see what happens. Let it squirt. Whoa. Oh, there's such a mix of things going on. This ready part is bent. Oh. It is filled with a hot syrup. It's like napalm. You gotta be careful. It will leak out onto you. The best way to have any dessert in India is still blazing hot. I'm gonna take another bite of that. Not a ton of clovey flavor. Actually, there's some dairy in there, which is nice, soft, creamy. And then there's the rose. So you had this cool looking brown bottle of the souls of 10,000 fields of roses. <laughs> Pour that into the ghee, but also I think it's been put inside of the stuffing too. Holy cow! I mean, actual. Uh, there's a holy cow right there. <laughs> That's not even the one that came by earlier. That's a calf. Where are these cows giving birth? Are they just doing it on the street? I mean, that would be the most ultimate insane thing to see in the streets of India. Back to this. Let's take another bite. Oh, no, I got a mouthful of clove. I like the clove. It tastes like eating Christmas candy or something. An extraordinary dessert. I didn't even know this existed. Getting to try it as you see a calf walk by, even better. We have 
One more left. Let's get to it. We're now approaching our final food of the day. If I just show you each of the ingredients independently, you would never guess what all this is about to become. It has been an incredible journey throughout this entire day from the morning by the entrance to the river where people go and take a dip and worship all the way through these narrow pathways and alleys full of ancient history and foods and restaurants that have been around for hundreds of years. Here we have the final meal. This is called Chat. Chat is a family of savory treats that originated in India. They're considered snacks or starters. It's hard to explain. It's usually like a snacky item in India. It can be crunchy and dry, or it can be kind of soupy like this. The soupy version is called tomatar chat, and it packs a powerful, heavy punch. It is a beautiful mixture of ingredients. There is so much flavor in here, and it is so heavy inside. This thing is like... Why is he being pushed? I don't know. On a hot tawa, they add ghee and ginger, then a mushy mash of tomato and loads of spice. They mix in coriander, gora masala, chat masala, red chili powder, pink salt, and even more ghee. Mix, wow. mash, and mix again until it's ready. This is the base for this dish, and it'll be put together with even more ghee, sugary syrup, and a bit of lime. Hit it with a few more doses of chat masala and a tomato gravy. For texture, fried crackers garnished with even more coriander. Then, Holy this highly concentrated cow. flavor bomb is ready for action. This is one of the only places in India where you're gonna find something like this. I'm gonna try it out. Oh, that's delightful. Uh oh, uh oh, we're doing a U-turn. It's possible we're causing a traffic jam, but no worse than the cows. Let's talk about this very tomatoey, but it's not like a tomato sauce in its texture at all. Like he's just being pushed. There's fresh elements in there. There's some fresh elements because he put some herbs in there, but let's be honest, this is a hard burn factory right here. So much tomato, so much acidicness that's blended with a ton of masala spices and that really heavy heat. There's pools of fat in here, but they found a way to make it taste kind of balanced. That is our final food for today. I love it. Before departing for Anasi, I have one more order of business to attend to. The Ganges. Iconic, holy, inviting to all who seek it. The New York Times articles will tell you to steer clear, writing the laundry list of afflictions that await you in these silty waters. But these are the same people who tell you not to eat street food. To risk from the moment you wake up to the moment you nod off at night. <laughs> me, I'll never be fulfilled to huh? myself that at least I played it safe. At least I dodged a hypothetical calamity or some imagined outcome. <laughs> Instead of certainty, I'd rather have a story for life. Well done. Get the white man! <laughs> By the way, the moment I stepped out of the Ganges, I oh! stepped the algae soaked steps, hit my leg, and I couldn't walk for two weeks. Oh. Somehow this holy healing river completely kicked my ass. Oh, 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 oh shit! Independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. This is my man Pradeep. This is his shop. He is the boss of pun. That could be a new, a new Food Network show. Boss of pun. Who needs boss of cakes? Or what is it? Cake boss? Pun boss. I'm just noticing there's a painting over here that says 75 years old. I'm curious. Why not just like write the year it established? Because now you have to update the year every year. I don't think they've updated that for a while. I would absolutely recommend this. Hey, how you doing? I don't think that hunk was for us. I think it was for someone else. <laughs> Gosh dang heart attack. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. One's our stop. There's no pull cord. <laughs> always enjoy his videos. Fun as man. always. I always enjoy his videos. Me All too. Of, every single one of those looked absolutely delicious. Even the pawn? No. <laughs> I... As long as it... I think it's the rose. I hate... I think Ro rose flavor just tastes like perfume to me. I like think that's what the turnoff is for. Ramal perfume. Right. And that uh, here, like, it's a very distinct smell. Uh, well, most pond that's sold here, like, you can go to an Indian market and you'll see them having some pond that's been sitting out. You don't know how long it's just been. That was the first pond that we ever had. Yeah. I and went, it did. I, it tasted like it was just dunked was, in perfume. But then we had the one in India that also still tastes like It was perfume. much better. 
the one that was made for us at this Bangladeshi festival. Fresh ingredients. Better pizza, Papa John's. Not Bangladeshi, it was Bengali, Hindu. Oh, Shoshwati my bad. Pujo. Thank you. Saraswati Puja. If you can't Thank hear you. it, because she's not speaking into her mind. So, yeah, explain that more clearly. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Yes, we went to a Saraswati Puja uh, festival. Festival, yeah. In the Bengali community here. Yeah. And that's when we had pan. But I know it. Wh- why it didn't stink like you uh, said. That's gross. Because... The person used uh, raspberry jam oh. instead of something. Instead of the rose. Oh, that'd be that's much why better. I liked it. That'd be much better. Keep the rose that away. That explains. I actually we had to uh, for I forget what dish it was. We had to buy rose, and um, I put I barely put any, but I could still taste it. I was like, I just this would be fine. Just take yeah. the rose out. It's so gross. Ugh, I hate it. It's a gross flavor. I'm sorry. And I know it's extremely popular in India, like the rose flavor. But man, I don't like it at all. No, I'm not a fan either. Uh, if that's that why, if that's why I liked his pan, then that's that's the that's the issue. Do people make pan like in their homes or is it something you like a street thing you just got and you get? No, uh many people make it at home, especially women. Okay. Uh because it's like in like a digestive and um my aunts like used to put like nicotine powder in oh, it nice. so give them a little <laughs> yep. you know buzz speaking of digestives you know we bought the other day and i actually popped in my mouth while Hola. while she was making she was making dinner it's up there yep she was making dinner and i said you know what i'm going to have a hajmola and i just sat down and it was actually post dinner cuz i was having as a digestive India so was, really loves digestives. It was I actually was like <laughs> enjoying it, just letting it dis- dissolve on my tongue. Like your food is but so here, heavy. this is this is one of the, this is what she made the other night. She's been cooking amazing stuff the past couple of days. I'm yeah, she's been cooking is something that, new every day. Is that okra. Yeah. Yep. Okra with mustard and poppy seed paste. You guys love uh, mustard seed and mustard. Oh yeah. Well, she was making stuff. She what was food processing cabbage. it and cabbage. cabbage. Yep. Spicy okay. cabbage. There Stir you go. Fried cabbage. Looks looks quite tasty. It was amazing. And ghee in the butter. You have any? I mean, naan? ghee on the rice. Naan to eat that rice with? Nope. Oh. I don't combine my naan with rice because I'm married to an Indian woman. Well, clearly you've never had a burrito. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what other videos we can react to. Those are Mexicans, uh, by the way. Not Indians. It, Same place? Tor- yeah. Tortillas. They're close enough on the... Tortillas is yeah. basically right. uh, roti. Because they're so close to each other culturally on the planet. They're just... They are. This, this, the similarities are funny, but no. I've never once seen my wife... Tortillas? Take a yeah, tortilla. Tortillas and, and roti? Roti is just a flaky tortilla. That's all yeah, it is. Yeah, she uses she I, uses tortillas sometimes like a roti. Yeah, it's uh, it's not that weird as you guys think it is. Also, stop eating rose stuff. That's gross. Anyways, let us know what other <laughs> videos we can react to down below. The Bollywood Bully Cuisine. Uh, uh, with the Bollywood Bully Cuisine.